and now I my back cracked. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I am allowing Lisa, hoping to allow you into a state.
24-7 feeling nauseous, but there are periods where I'm more or less nauseous, and I do find you wouldn't think that I'm talking fast because there's just so much going on in my head, but you wouldn't think that being nauseous would make you want to eat. You think like, oh, nauseous, like avoiding food, but in pregnancy, being nauseous makes me want to eat because when I'm eating, I don't feel nauseous. So I've already gained a significant amount of weight up until this point, which actually is concerning me because I'm like, how much am I going to be gaining by the end of this pregnancy, you know? So anyway, um, thank you for those of you who say that I look good in my videos. I really appreciate it because I don't feel so good right now. Um, yeah. You know, I'm at that stage where, of course, my stomach is showing, but I, you kind of just look like you've gained weight. You don't necessarily look pregnant. I don't think anyone would be like, oh, when are you due? Because <laughs> I don't know if I look pregnant, unless, of course, I wear something really tight and you just see my stomach, because I definitely have the baby bump. But it's not so big yet that that's all you would see, so I just feel kind of just, like, bigger. I'm just not so good about myself right now, but that's okay. Um, I am pregnant with a girl, a baby girl. We discovered that because at your um, dating ultrasound appointment, being pregnant, there are so many appointments you have to go to between going to your OB and then having ultrasounds and then other things coming up. So we found out we were having a girl because my husband and I went to the ultrasound scan and we told them if it's possible, write it on an envelope because my sister, my younger sister Jules, she wanted to get the car. And where is it? I just had it a second ago. Yeah, I'll show you. She wanted to get it in an envelope and make me a cake. Pink for a girl, blue for a boy. So she saw this. So yeah, um, that was so cute. And the person who happened to be doing my ultrasound that day was so nice. So it was really nice that she was the one to sort of reveal the news. So. When, so we did the test the day before my birthday and I didn't think I would do my um, gender reveal on my birthday because I didn't want to like like put the two together in any way because I wanted it to be just like a special separate moment but then when my husband and I found out we're like okay Jules can you make this cake ASAP because I want I want it to be my breakfast cake so we did like a private um, like romantic gender reveal with just him and I and my two sisters for breakfast, and of course my older sister's little baby, he's three months old, and so it was just a very intimate, private gender reveal, just us, and the funny thing is, so my husband and I knew it would be a girl because this is an interesting story. Number one, we just had the feeling. Number two, when I met my husband, his family knows a s sort of like psychic part. I don't know if you want to say psychic or just someone who's pretty clairvoyant and this person told, and whether you want to believe in that or not, I mean that's so up to you, right? Like you can take it with a grain of salt of course, but this person is a family friend of my husband's family and this person told my husband before, like years ago, that he would meet his like soulmate, his like life partner and her name would either begin with like an L-I or L-A in which case it's me. <laughs> and um, the interesting thing about that is that also, I think when he asked about kids or something, like she said, he'll have a girl or she mentioned that. Hopefully we have more than just that because I, I do want at least two kids, but well, I want two pretty much. But yeah, so we both knew it would be a girl, which is the interesting thing. So I said, the only way I'd be surprised in the gender reveal is if it was a boy. And we didn't care what it was true. We just were eager to know, so we did the gender reveal, and the funny thing is, is that, of course, in the time, it was such an emotional, sweet moment for my husband and I, like, we both, like, cried, it was pretty emotional, I didn't expect to cry, but, you know, hormones and stuff, and he was so emotional, and, like, because I was recording him, <laughs> I wonder if I'll insert a clip, but because I was recording him, he was, like, kind of embarrassed to like cry on camera so he kind of acted like almost like when he saw it was a girl he was so emotional that he almost like it would could be perceived as like a disappointment because <laughs> he was kind of like trying not to cry and he like he puts the glass down and he's like you know he was kind of like he was very overcome with emotions and in the moment since I know him so well I knew that and you know we were hugging and kissing and it was very emotional but then in the video <laughs> it can almost be perceived as like 
like, you know, like, disappointment. Like, you know, like, a typical, like, guy who wants, like, a boy, and they're disappointed. But it couldn't be farther from the truth because we wanted, we wanted a little girl because we just had a feeling it would be a little girl. So that was just something funny <laughs> that I wanted to share with you all. Uh, maybe I'll insert the clip so you can see what I'm talking about. Then he's like, oh my god, like, I didn't want it to be like that. I was just overcome with emotion. I was trying so hard to, like, keep it in and, like, keep a brave face. And I was like, it's okay to cry. Like, I would have cut it out if you didn't want anyone to see that, you know? But, yeah, so that's pretty funny. Um, and, yeah, the reason why we filmed it is because I feel like, I've mentioned this before, but I feel like I have, like, a separate identity from you all because I technically have, like, another, not public persona because whatever, but before I started this ASMR channel, I had sort of like a lifestyle channel on YouTube as well, where I'll do a lot of travel vlogs and things like that, and I've never merged the worlds because not a lot of people, although some people are catching on, but not a lot of people are aware that I make ASMR videos. I don't know why it's something that I've never really spoken about, maybe because it can be seen as like taboo, although it's not, and I don't do any I'm not proud of by any means, but yeah, so I've just kept the two worlds separately, so I've kept that world separate from this world, and this world separate from that world, and sometimes I question myself, and I was like, I kind of want to let you guys into that side of me, but then I was thinking from experience, even myself, sometimes when you see an ASMR creator in a zone outside of their ASMR world, not that it's like a turn off, that's not even the right like description, but sometimes like their personality is different just because naturally ASMR is more conducive of like this more like sort of like personal and soft and like intimate and relaxing experience. And then when you see someone outside of that, it's almost shocking and I didn't want you to feel that way. But then sometimes I feel like I keep the world separately so much so that it's like a detriment to myself and how I live and it almost feels like I'm keeping a secret that I didn't want to keep. So I don't know what to do. Sometimes I'm like, should I share that other channel with you? I know some of you have asked and I've even shared it with like a handful of you, but I've never um, crossed the worlds over. And I don't know if I will or not, I'm not sure, so I'm just brainstorming out loud and I do want your opinion on that. Do you not like seeing an ASMR creator having like a separate, like, life, like a separate, like, um, like, let's say, lifestyle vlog channel, you know? Do you not like seeing them outside of the ASMR world, I should say? Does it kind of taint the experience? I hope that you answer honestly because I'm genuinely curious as to what you'll say and then you'll have to give me time to decide how to um, approach things accordingly. I will say that this ASMR channel, like I've given my all to, I've never done that but I've committed to a strict upload schedule and I've uploaded so much more content than my other channel anyway but like I upload three times a week and there I would be lucky if I uploaded three times a month so it's that kind of thing but yeah, it's just, I'm so, like, passionate about ASMR, and I feel like I've found something that, like, I feel so, um, strongly about. Like, I love making the content, and I love editing the content, and, like, that's something normally that I don't think, I don't think anyone really enjoys editing. I mean, unless you're an, edit an editor, I would hope, but I just feel like I love both worlds. just wanted to give it my own focus on this and just keep the world separate and, you know, kind of like keep you in a protective little bubble. I don't think my personality is different though. Like, I don't think if you were to see me in a different scenario that you'd be at all shocked. However, um, as anyone's personality is, like, there are things that you'll never be able to see just because it wouldn't be natural, you know? I can't display, like, my quirky, funny, weird side to you naturally as I would to like my family members or my husband who just see me being like a total goof all the time. You know, like I can't, some things just don't come across, right? So I suppose you'll never really know someone, but I hope that whatever medium I pursue, I'm always my authentic self and you'll never see like two different sides of me that are like so 
contrarian that it just feels odd, you know? But yeah, it's kind of funny because um, I didn't mean to keep this secret from you or them from anything, but it just so happened to work out that way. And like, even now, like if someone who knows me mentions ASMR or even perhaps my channel because they've accidentally found me, like, it feels so weird, but it shouldn't feel that way, you know? Like, ideally, everyone would just know and it would be like a celebration. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just how I'm feeling. And now I was talking about recording, how difficult it can be, and I mentioned this in another video. Sometimes I might repeat myself because I don't know which video is coming up first, but yeah, I mentioned that it's so difficult for me to record ASMR videos sometimes because I live with my sister who has a fiance who often lives with us and I live with my husband because <laughs> we're married and we're living together in this condo so this condo is my sisters and I's and of course it's also going to my older sister too when we divide our assets in the future uh, it's a long story about whatever but um yeah the interesting thing is is that my husband and I purchased a property I did talk about this I don't want to dwell too much I hate repeating myself I think I talked about this in like a bought a property was it two years ago almost now and it's going to be ready summer 2024 late summer but basically until then I'm going to be still living here with him and you know how new belts can be they might even say late summer and it could be more like fall I'm a little scared about that but I do enjoy the fact that although it will be very hectic that my baby will be born in this condo and can therefore bond with my sisters because I live with my younger sister and my older sister is three floors up. <laughs> so we're all living together in one big bubble, which has been nice for me because I get to also see my nephew grow up because he lives upstairs with my sister and her husband. And I know that my younger sister will really get to bond with me and the baby. And it's nice for Luna, my little beautiful chihuahua Luna, because I wanted her to be filming today. I even had her food here, but when the lights go off and it's quiet, she gets very, like, nervous. <laughs> but anyway, um, on that train of thought, I also wanted Luna to be able to adjust to the new baby and have her life not change completely. Because imagine she's known only this condo and only my sister and I as her parents pretty much her whole life. So imagine I move out with my husband and I have a baby suddenly, and Luna just feels so shocked. So I want to slowly introduce her to, like, the baby. I think my older sister having a baby, he's three month old, months old, I think that's helped Luna because children, like, freak her out. And I do find she can be kind of jealous. So, yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is, even though my life can be a little chaotic and very difficult to film, I'm still grateful for my life right now and how we're living and things like that. Because I think that it's going to be a nice adjustment for everyone. Although, I live in a condo, so th I won't have a room for, like, a baby nursery. So I'm going to have to, like, shift things around in here, and it's just going to be pretty chaotic and things like that. And yeah, I mentioned a little bit, I think even in my last video, just about, like, the financial situation, the, the interesting thing is, is that my husband and I probably bought at the worst time you could buy at, because... Prices were very high and interest rates at the time were very low. And now when you're going into like a pre-construction or a new build, now interest rates are sky high. And the prices have kind of gone down for houses and it's just like the worst case scenario. So, you know, finances and trying to be financially responsible and having a new baby on the way and all that. There has been a little bit of like financial stress in my life too, in that sense. But we're lucky to have each other and, you know, he has a great job and we really support each other and help each other in that sense and that's been good. But there has been some some difficulties in that sense, which I do think could be relatable to a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. I think everyone puts forward their best face and like their most luxurious lifestyle, but that's not necessarily like the truth behind everything, you know. I think we often miss people's struggles because that's not something that you really display, you know? Ideally, you're happy and you just display that, but of course when we're sad, I don't think we would display something like that or share these kind of things, but I think I'm pretty transparent with you all and I like to be, 
you know, very, um, honest with you. And man, is baby stuff expensive. Are any of you parents or even mothers here with me right now? But holy moly, so my husband and I bought, because it was on sale for Black Friday, we bought a baby carriage. This was before we even found out the sex. And there was, it's like the most popular baby carriage brand. And, um, we really wanted a good one. My sister has it. She recommends it and I'm already a little comfortable using it. So we thought, fine, we saved money buying this specific color on Black Friday. And it's kind of like a little bit bluish. Um, it's almost like a blue jean looking color. You can see like bluish gray, which is nice. But of course, like it's just very, um, it's not so girly, which I wouldn't even want anyway, because I would ideally use the carriage for baby number two if I'm lucky enough to have baby number two. But yeah, just saving where we can has been so helpful. My sister told me to make a baby registry for like family members or anything. I don't plan on having a baby shower. It's just not the kind of person that I am. I didn't have a wedding shower either. I don't know, I just don't want people to feel like obligated to like come to something and bring me gifts and what have you. So, But my sister's like, make a baby registry because people will want to get you things. And at least they'll know what they can get you. So maybe a few friends and a few family members can shop from my baby registry, which I've been making, but then like, man, things are so expensive. And then if I were to add things that are not so expensive on the list, I'd be like, why don't I just buy this myself, you know? But my sister's like, make it and just put anything you want there. That way you can even keep track of things you're getting and stuff like that, because, man, and I still don't know what I'm going to do because depending how long I'm in this condo after I give birth, I'm anticipating three months, but it could even be longer. I don't know if I should bother putting a crib in yet or just having like the bassinet. Either way, I need both eventually, but I'm just not sure how to go about doing this. And I feel like I need like a, a changing station. Like, oh my gosh, I'm lucky my room is big. It's huge, but I still don't know where to put everything. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you at my vanity. And I might have to just move this in that corner or something else. And I don't know, my life will be a little bit in shambles. So that's part of the reason why I want to pre-film a lot of content too. Because I don't know what the heck my life is going to look like come April, May, you know? So I do want a lot of... I want to slowly pre-film things. Especially while I'm still looking and feeling okay. Because in the third trimester, I think I'll look a lot worse. <laughs> is a beautiful thing and it's a blessing to be pregnant but I anticipate being even more out of breath and I don't know if I'll still be nauseous or not but man like if I am and I'm you know so pregnant still I don't think it will be easy to make ASMR videos I'll probably have to do a few more videos with minimal talking so I don't talk too much um, as you know I mentioned being faint in one of my videos and it's even in the bloopers it was in one of the um, questions videos and of course it was because I was pregnant but I couldn't tell you guys <laughs> so I was just like oh man I was like I'm like oh no I felt so sad that day because I had planned to film so much green screen and then I was like can I not even finish video number two without fainting it was bad so yeah I'm sorry if sometimes my videos are a little bit shorter lately it's just sometimes been getting a little better, but I was a few weeks ago getting more of like a gagging, this weird gagging thing. Let me know if you've ever experienced this, if you have been pregnant before, but I get this just like urge to just gag out of the blue, like, even talking about it kind of makes me feel a little sick, but so I would just like gag out of the blue. Sometimes I'm talking too much and I have to like try my hardest not to turn that into puke. And to be honest, I have vomited, I would say a handful of times only, and in the first trimester, so not in the second trimester, thank God, but from week eight to like maybe 16 or something, there was a handful of times that I would vomit because I would smell the toilet water. And it's not dirty toilet water, it's clean toilet water, it's just like a freshly flushed toilet, and that smell would make me gay that in the combination of brushing my teeth in my bathroom because for how big my room is my bathroom is kind of small and the smells were just overwhelming it was just it was too much for me to take it was sickening so 
been just things that you don't necessarily expect when you're pregnant. Honestly, I didn't think I'd be the type of person to ever throw up and here I was, you know? And now, interesting, this is definitely TMI, but my boobs are way bigger than ever before. You probably wouldn't notice, but sometimes when I'm filming the video, I'm like, oh my god, I didn't think that my boobs are showing so much. Because I would, I would wear <clears throat> bras with padding in them before, just to give myself, like, a little bit of help, because I don't have, like, the biggest, you know, chest area. It's like, I would say it's normal. But man, I'm wearing like basically like nothing, like a little training bra, like nothing. So thin and like they're just like gigantic right now. I don't know. It's weird the changes your body goes through. <laughs> and so that's something that I, I guess I anticipated, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. And as well, um, at the 20 week mark, I really felt my baby kicking, which was so cute. And the fun thing is, is that already Nikita, my husband, has felt the baby kick too, which I think is pretty early because once I told him, I'm like, the baby's really active, put your hand there. And he put it and my hand was on top of his and we both felt the kick, which was so cute. It kind of in the beginning, like right now anyways, because I'm not so far along, it just feels like almost like little flutters, like little bubbly feeling in your stomach. It's very interesting and it's really cute. <laughs> Sorry, I keep looking at my camera because it's, it keeps saying it's overheating and I'm nervous that it's going to close. Maybe I should just sort of end the video soon because I've been blabbing away. But yeah, that's been some something that's so cute to experience. Next step for my pregnancy, if you want to know at all. Um, I have to see my OB in the new year and then um, she's going to prescribe me a... Um, visit to have the gestational diabetes test done, which I heard is kind of a shitty test. Sorry, forgive my swearing, but my sister just said, like, you drink this, like, really sweet liquid, and they test you to see if you have that, and regardless of your health status or what, it can happen to any woman, you can just get this gestational diabetes, in which case, if you do get it, you'll have to avoid sweets like the plague, and oh my gosh, if you know me, you know that that's so difficult. The fun thing is, is that being pregnant over the holidays, because it's still the holiday season, it's been a blessing and a curse. A blessing because I feel like I could just eat everything and there's so much to indulge in, and then a curse because it's like, I think I'm overdoing it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to give myself grace and just, you know, remind myself that I'm so blessed to have even been pregnant. And then just to talk about that a bit, because I don't think I've talked about that at all before my battery dies, but... So... I got pregnant, not on my honeymoon, but that's the first time that my husband and I tried to get pregnant. I remember before the wedding, I'm like, don't you dare, like, we have to be very careful because I want to fit in my dress. I don't want to feel sick on my wedding day. Like, I was really paranoid to get pregnant before. Because everyone says, they're like, oh, the women in this family, they get pregnant like that. Like, my mom, my grandma's on both sides, my aunt, like, everyone just gets pregnant so easily in my family. So I was like, what the heck? So I was nervous. So when I tried on my honeymoon, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get pregnant, like, for sure. And so I remember it was, like, the last day of my honeymoon. And I feel like I saw, like, a little bit that signed that, like, I wasn't pregnant, that my period was coming. Sorry if this is, like, TMI, but that's life, guys. <laughs> and I saw, like, signs that it was coming. And I was like, oh, like, sometimes people can say it's, like, implantation bleeding. <laughs> but I was like, mm, I, I don't think I'm pregnant. So I was kind of a little bit sad. And then when it turns out after I arrived, when I did, you know, get my period and I wasn't pregnant, I was kind of sad. And then I kind of went into like a panic mode, which is stupid because who tries for one month and then you can't get pregnant and you freak out, you know? They say it can take anywhere from six to nine months on average. But because of my age, I think like six months is probably... Anyway, I was nervous about it. So because I didn't get pregnant on my honeymoon, I kind of was panicking. And then so I bought royal jelly... Is it royal jelly? Yeah, I bought these royal jelly pills and maca powder and I was like eating nuts, like a little bit of Brazil nuts and I was giving nuts to my husband because they say nuts for his nuts. <laughs> Sorry, that's TMI, but there's so many like healthy ways you can go about like trying to like help the process. So I did that, but then I got pregnant immediately after and I don't know, I don't think it's because of anything I was taking because it wasn't even for very long, but I was just paranoid. Because I was saying, like, wouldn't it be ironic, like, all the women in my family get pregnant so easily, and then 
here I am. Nothing. And you know, the irony is that, at least for a lot of women, we spend a lot of our lives actively trying not to get pregnant. And then, you know, the irony is that if you try to get pregnant, you can't. I mean, it's just very disappointing and so sad. And my heart goes out to anyone who's experienced anything like that. And I had a little bit of paranoia. I think my older sister would be fine with me mentioning that because I've asked her before. But she had a similar situation in the sense that she, I think she got pregnant like right away, like on her honeymoon. But her pregnancy had to end sadly in a miscarriage because I, I don't even think there was a baby in the sack. So it was like an empty sack for her pregnancy, but still she had to go through the miscarriage and that, seeing her go through that and it was so difficult for her. And just, I don't want to talk too much about that. I don't want to like traumatize anyone if you're not here to talk about that, but that was always in the back of my mind. So even when I got pregnant, I was always really sensitive about that. And I'm always still to this day sensitive about women who have difficulty or struggles in conceiving. So I don't like to talk about my pregnancy and like feel like I'm like rubbing it in someone's face or something. Like I, I would hate that because I'm so like sympathetic to anyone who's struggling, you know? There's a couple, there's a few couples I follow that have a lot of struggle with that and my just, my heart goes out to them because it always seems like it's like the best parents, you know, the ones who would be the best parents that have the most difficulty. So it just breaks my heart. So yeah, I haven't been very like vocal about like talking about it too much. Also for that reason, I don't want to make anyone feel bad. I want everyone in my channel to feel happy and hopeful and positive and I would hate that I would bring like, um, a sense of sadness, but I mean, it's hard to control these things because anything I talk about could be a trigger, you know, like, and at the same time, I do want to share my life with you all, so, yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. I feel like I'm rambling so much, but this feels very, like, ah, uh, like a weight is off my shoulders because I can finally just be open with you all and ramble with you all and, yeah, just pour my heart out to you and it feels good because I, I don't want to feel like I'm, like, keeping anything from you or, you know, giving you like little breadcrumbs of my life. Like I want you to know what's going on genuinely. And I love spending time with you. I really do. It's like my therapy session. You know, sometimes I'm a therapist. Like right now you're my therapist. <laughs> but yeah, so that's everything that's going on in my life. If you'd like to fill me in on your life, I would so appreciate it. I love reading your comments. And I, of course, as you know, I try to respond to every single one of them. But of course, you could be a private person, in which case I'm just happy you're here and you're watching and you're supporting in other ways, you know? You don't have to necessarily be vocal to be like an active supporter of my channel. So I so appreciate you. And on to my last ramble note. So a few people have mentioned that they like my lipsticks and let me just grab it really quick. And they wanted me to share if I can in the description box, what I'm wearing on occasion, because sometimes you'll ask me what I'm wearing in a role play, and I filmed that video like weeks ago, and I have no idea, and I'm always mixing colors, but today I just wore one on purpose, and this is called Veronica Liquid Lipstick by Anastasia Beverly Hills, or Anastasia Beverly Hills, and I'm going to try my best to link my lip products in the description box down below. I won't always do it every time because I know me. I am going, I'm down to forget. Sometimes I mix the most random things and I'm like, oh, I don't know what the heck I wore. But I'm going to try my best to link that for you all. For those of you who actually like want to know and care, I do, I feel for you and I, I don't want to like, gatekeep in any way. So I'm going to try to share that as much as I can. Um, the past few Cocology videos and things that I filmed, it's with the same lipstick, so... <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening to me ramble. And I should definitely sign off before my battery dies and overheats. And before you're just sick of me. So, thank you for being here. I hope you'll have a safe and happy holiday season, New Year season, whenever you're watching this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hopefully this makes you feel a little closer to me. Because I feel a lot closer to you after this, that's for sure.